would you tell any couple that's out there planning their wedding right now? Any advice you would give them um, before hiring a photographer and what would like to look for? Yeah. Um, so let's talk about um, the price of weddings. Yeah. Um, why does wedding photography cost so much? Welcome to the Wedding Dreams Unveiled podcast, your go-to source for insightful conversations with ordinary newlyweds and vendors navigating the difficult world of wedding planning. I'm your host, Livingston Lee, and with a decade of experience and hundreds of weddings captured, I'm here to tell you some of my stories and some of the other people's stories about the wedding business. Now let's get started with today's guest. Chip Lit. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm good, my brother. Good thank to see you, man. Thanks thank for coming on the podcast. Welcome to the studio. Yes, thank it's been you. a it's been a beautiful thing, man. We had an episode with you and your lovely wife, man. Yes. Just coming off your 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 uh, fresh honeymoon and your yes. fresh marriage, man. That was you know all of that good stuff, man. Yes. Published and all that, man. And you are a successful um, educator and photographer, man. And and I just thank you for coming on the podcast. Hey, brother. man. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Yep, 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 yep. So I want to talk to some of the wedding couples out here um, about, you know, things that they, they're seeing in the industry, things that, you know, we as photographers can help them to um, do things a little better or help them to realize, hey, if I do it this way, then I won't go through this. Or if I do it that way, I won't go through that. So this is pretty much, we're talking to a wedding couple that's out there planning right now. Okay. So what, how long have you been in the industry and how long well, have you been doing weddings? Well, started my first wedding in 20, uh, 2010. So that was a while ago where I was kind of uh, coerced to doing it, but probably didn't really take it real seriously. Like till about five, six years later, 20. 15, 2016. Okay. And it went from there and going from there. So I've seen a lot, done a lot of weddings, probably done over 7,500 weddings. I, I don't know, shot them, been part of them. Um, so, so many, so many stories that we can go over. Right. <laughs> we wouldn't have time in this podcast, but one thing that I enjoy telling and capturing stories. Right. So that's one thing I know, right. especially, um, someone's most important day. Yes. So it's really absolutely. Important. Absolutely, man. So I enjoy telling stories and capturing them and seeing from um, the start of the process to them getting the album to them enjoying and stuff. And then seeing a couple of years later. Yeah. And and seeing just this a cycle and, and you're there to celebrate on that day and yeah. a big part of it. So oh, yeah. it's been a really good run doing these weddings. I don't do as much as I used to, but I'm still involved in the industry a lot as an educator, and um, I still shoot some from time to time, but it's been a really good, really good time. Right, right, right. What would you tell any couple that's out there planning their wedding right now, any advice you would give them um, before hiring a photographer and what would like to look for? Yeah, look at their style. Um, of course, you're gonna, people are going to look at their pricing, but see if their style matches what you want. Look how they shoot. Um, if it's natural light, there's a lot of natural light photographers. Mm -hmm. And if they don't know the technical terms like off camera flash or nighttime photographers, just see what kind of style you are more editorial. You know, I know with, with, with my pictures, I wanted some pose stuff. I wanted smiles. Yeah. I wanted, I didn't want the sleigh picture. So know what you want. If you want that sleigh look, you know, when I say sleigh, I'm talking about the people that are more editorial in nature, yeah. mm -hmm. they're not smiling. It's more posed. Okay. And some people want more just candid moments and know what you want. And if you don't know, um, you, you look around and, and see. Um, also, referrals work well. I know everybody goes on Instagram. Everybody goes on social media. Yeah. But there's nothing like a good old word of mouth. Yes. Still. Yeah. I love Instagram. I love social media. But I would tell people to ask around and, of course, read reviews. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but ask around and see what kind of style uh, makes it if that works in your budget and getting the person that really knows you and knows how to capture what you what you really want with your day and mm -hmm. you really want moments and yep. that's a, the, the end of the day is moments and can I trust that person and years from now to look at these moments and say you know what he or she captured those moments right and, I can, and I'm really happy about it right 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 all right so how do you um like destination weddings let's talk about that yeah 
That's one of your specialties that I know you've been doing a while. You've yeah. done a lot of them. Yes. I see you flying all over the place doing this, doing that, and all yeah. that kind of stuff, man. How do you approach destination weddings? Wow, great question. I approach the destination wedding as, of course, not a vacation. Yep. It's, it's, it's a destination <laughs> that I know I got one chance to get, usually. You can't go back, um, and it's a lot of pressure. So I approach it it's, it's a great venue it's great weather but i approach it like a wedding but another level a tier of it because a lot of times if you're new to wedding business you can go drive by a venue if it's local mm. you can go see it yeah yeah you go on the internet but i can say hey i can go stop by you know you know whatever venue it is here locally right. destination you're gonna get there either the day before or Sometimes, not the day of, but used to the day before. And then when you get there, sometimes it's nighttime and then you just got to go for it. <laughs> so a lot of planning, making sure you take all the equipment. Um, I remember going to a, a destination in Jamaica and I remember I dropped the lens and it was my 24 to 70. Ooh. And that's, you know, how those 24 to 70 lenses are heavy. more technical. Yeah. It's an expensive lens, yes. 2.8. Oh, yeah. And it, and it, I couldn't shoot with it. Oh, but man. thankfully, I had a 35, so I had a mm-hmm. backup, and I had a backup camera. As well. Yeah, oh, yeah. But I just, it just slipped out of my hand. And I always carry two cameras, and I couldn't ask so anybody. I guess I could have found someone on an island that I could rent one for, but at the time, it was during the wedding day. Yeah. So it's not like I was in Atlanta or I was in D.C. Yep. or Baltimore. Yep. I could yep. call a friend, hey, yep. come bring me a 24 real quick. <laughs> yeah. You know? So I think having those backups and making sure that you have enough gear, because if you're blessed to bring another person with you because sometimes when you shoot these destination weddings it's just you alone yes you don't have an assistant yep. or a second shooter yeah so when i dropped that lens i had to put it in a bag and use a 35 and move my feet right the entire wedding yeah so using i'm so used to using a 24 to 70 lens mm-hmm. of the lens so i think that's one of the things and being over prepared yeah and um some people say they don't like to overshoot but i like when destination weddings i shoot a lot more just because you never know what the environment is, but you don't want to wear the couple out as well. Yes. You want to let them relax a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You can, I see photographers where you're like, no, let's get these portraits. This amazing sunset. Mm -hmm. And there's some people that just don't want to. Yeah. They, I want to encourage them, but you can't force them. Right. Because I'm like, well, you paid for this wedding and it's indoors, but there's an amazing sunset with a beach. And yeah. you're not going to have that yep. in Maryland. <laughs> yep. Unless we go to Eastern Shore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and yeah, that's North not like Beach or something like that. It's yeah. not the Caribbean. Right. So, so, yeah, just having that balance of destinations. Because a lot of people think it's a glamorous job, which it is. Yeah. But as you know, it's a lot of work involved. It is. A lot of pressure. It is a lot of work. Yeah. A lot yeah. Of pressure. You know, um, we had a previous guest, a previous photographer on Kenny Clapp. Shout out to my man, Kenny Clapp. Yes, sir. He was on, he was talking about destination weddings. Like, you know, you got to, if you're by yourself, you got to run from building seven That's to building saying. nine. Yep. Like, it's not easy. So, it's not. you know, it's it's best for couples to get problem. two photographers if possible, if possible, because it cuts down on wearing the photographer out, you know, it, so. It does. I was telling my wife that. Uh, we were on our honeymoon and I was remembering, listen, I had some flashbacks because uh-huh. we were walking through the honeymoon place and some of our, we had like this part of our honeymoon where it was some group, some, some of our friends came down the, the, the latter part of it yep. and they were in another building. And I was like, see, this is what happens with a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running from building seven to building six. And then sometimes <laughs> across the other side of the resort uh-huh. and I'm walking in the heat with gear yep. wearing black yep and i'm you know so it's a lot it seems like a lot once you see all the stuff but it, it's a lot even if you have another person with you it's a it's a lot so yeah it is it, a it's, lot it's great to do but um if you if especially if you don't know the venue and you're learning everything mm-hmm. and then um sometimes on a destination people are the guests and the wedding party have a turn i uh, have uh sometimes they want to be more relaxed mm-hmm. and Island time sets in where it is, you tell 10 o'clock, it means 1045. Yeah. You know, and sometimes people get too relaxed, unlimited drinks, unlimited mm-hmm. food. Yeah. 24 seven. It can go <laughs> south real quick. You can just go get whatever you want yeah, at any so, time you want. And people, unfortunately, I'm talking about guests and even brides and grooms, when they get overseas, sometimes how they act in the United States are not how they really act <laughs> over there. But we as professionals have to act Yes. You know what I mean? It's not mm-hmm. a big, it was, it's fun after the reception's yeah. over, but 
we have to make sure that we get all the stuff because they're oh, paying yeah. us a lot of money yeah. to get these things. Yeah. And so it's a, it's difficult, but it's a good thing to do. So right. it's a good thing to do. But um, I I, t- I tip my hat to anybody, especially the video team. On, yeah. On Destination It's Wedding. a lot of stuff they got to carry. Tripods. Yes. And lights. Yep. And, you know, it's Us photographers don't have to carry all that stuff. <laughs> Tripod stands. <laughs> yeah. Light stands. Yep. And, they got a lot, a lot of stuff to it's carry. Um, so let's talk about um, the price of weddings. Yeah. Why does wedding photography cost so much? And, and I know the answer to it, but yeah. I always ask other photographers mm-hmm. like to explain that so that way wedding couples that are planning right now know what to expect. Yeah. I think that it comes into your experience, okay? As the photographer, you know what you're going to get. It's kind of like, um, if you're a football player and you're a rookie, you can't demand as much as somebody who's been a basketball, football player for 10 or five years successful. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's just not going to happen. Yeah, you'll get a great rookie contract just because you're in the league, you're coming in the league, but to continue to get that bigger contract. So I'm going to say it's not only your experience, it's the gear that you invest, the assurance, the continuing education. Yeah. Um, it's all those intangibles happen you know what to do when a problem arises mm-hmm. um a light goes out i i drop my lens yeah. i don't panic i can still you won't right. you won't know that i missed a shot absolutely when i ruined the gear um there was a time that that you could charge because you know um what to do when and how to fix it so there's a time i was doing video years ago and I was shoot second shooting for a videographer and she forgot to press the record button. But I remember on the video, I was in the back and I wow. had a wide shot. Yeah. I pressed the record button on the ceremony. Yeah. She just forgot. Man. And it's happened. It's all happened yes. to before. Especially videographers. Yeah. yeah. And you had to figure to hit the record button on it. But I, I always hit that record button yeah. just make sure I didn't check her because I was a second videographer. Right. But I saved her for that oh, wedding. Oh, yes. I'm sure you that did. Happened. That happened. That, that, that can happen. So... Things like that. And she was new at the time. So mm-hmm. it was no disrespect. Yeah. She was new. I was helping her out and right. things like that. But you you pay for that stuff. So right. when people are cheaper sometimes, you see those rates, you're not paying for those kind of experience. And the gear. The gear is just better. Um, you know, we talk about friend Kenny. He has great gear and experience, and he has a technical know-how. We never yeah. have a technical know-how. Right. How to get the right shots mm-hmm. and how to get you in your best light. Yeah. And we don't need... 30 minutes to get one shot. Correct. We know how to get in five minutes and seven minutes. Yeah, well, we like 30 minutes, of course, but we know when the days that never happens. Right. So you 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 can have something called amateur hour. You have professional. And professional rates are as such. Yes. You know? Um, there's a friend of mine who was an attorney. He is an attorney. He said, I charge you, uh, I charge you a dollar because um, of the problem and I charge you $999 because I know how to fix the problem you know because <laughs> wow. you don't know how to fix that problem yeah because you know we like why wow, attorney rates are so high you know because I can get you out of that situation yeah and that's what we do as photographers yep. and vendors because we know what to do yeah and our rates should match us as, as such and yeah does everybody like them no but at the end of the day at least you know when you email somebody's experience you're going to get a call back an yep. email back yeah and then we're not going to ghost you you know hard stories of people running across yes. the world with people's pictures not giving albums yeah not you know ghosting people taking their money because think about it we're pay, people paying a thousand of dollars up mm-hmm. front yeah up front and, some, and a lot of times they don't know us yeah yeah and and all the guys are reviews and we taking their money without shooting a single picture yep maybe a gazement shoot but yeah. shooting a single picture right and we're getting this money and then we have to deliver. Yes. The planners paid, the other people's paid, and we still have to deliver albums. We still have to deliver galleries mm-hmm. and things like that. So Yeah. No, that's that's no, I'm I'm with you, man. Yeah. I agree one hundred percent. Um, do you think um a wedding couple should hire two photographers or you think one is okay? Depends what where you are. So I, I want to say it depends. Of course, I always say two. My wedding, we had one. Mm-hmm. We didn't have a wedding party. though. Yeah. And I knew that I could add two. It's not, it wasn't a budget thing. It was a thing that I wanted more focus on the bride. And I knew we were in the same area. If I know that me and my bride were not in the same hotel, it would, it would probably be best to hire two photographers. Mm-hmm. But I like two photographers a lot for my case. 
But there's a lot of times if it's a small wedding, I can do it by myself. Do it by yourself. Yeah. Especially if the groom and bride are in the same hotel. If they are in the same vicinity, I can just go upstairs, downstairs, yep. make it work. If the timeline works out. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to say always too, because people know their budget, their timing. Yes. <laughs> Pardon me. Everything that happens. And we want to make sure that, that people can, can get what they can afford. Yeah. I've done during COVID a lot of micro weddings. You remember all these micro weddings? Yes, 50 man. people, yeah. 40 people with masks on. And I shot a lot of them alone. And they were kind of just, now it was a little pressure. It was a little work. Yeah. Because, you know. <laughs> you got a mask COVID. on. And, yeah, it was yeah. hard. It was yeah. hard shooting that It stuff. was, yeah. It was hard running around, especially even during the summertime. It mm -hmm. was hard. I never forget yeah. to do that. But I did a lot of those alone. But, um, or you could do what I say I call one and a half. So I have somebody for prep and a ceremony. Mm. And then after that, I let the, I just shoot the reception alone. I never, I never thought 1. of that. 1.5. Yeah, that's why I, I do, do 1.5. I've lot. been shooting weddings 10 years <laughs> and I never thought of that. Yeah. Well, I guess I've seen Prep somebody, I've seen photographers just bring somebody in to help with the portraits. Yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. So that may be like a ceremony. one and a half, but prepping ceremony and then. And sometimes portraits, they can be a light holder for the portrait. Because, because you figure at the reception, you, I mean, yeah. after you, after you've been at the reception for two hours, it's just like, okay, we, we got enough dancing photos now. Correct. You know, un, un, we got enough of all of the preliminary photos, the cake cutting, the mother and son, I mean, ma, mother and uh, son dance and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So 1.5. So that's another thing that I think that people need to know that you don't have to have somebody the entire time now. Well, cut down on the cost a little bit, but then I don't know. It just depends how long now stuff runs late. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that's the only disadvantage. So I've seen where I've done it before and things have been an hour late, mm -hmm. hour and a half late. And the person is supposed to get off at eight o'clock and they don't get off till like 930. Mm -hmm. So that can run a risk, but it can work out. But if I can't have two people, if they have a wedding party, I try to have two people. I don't like shooting alone. There's yeah. some people who love shooting alone and I don't I don't blame them. There's some friends of mine who love shooting. Alone, yeah. But if I can do it, I'd rather shoot with somebody. And have somebody, or at least a lighting assistant. Yes. At least a lighting, somebody yeah. with my lights. And yeah. Yeah. Even events. I was just telling a friend, I don't like shooting these events alone because big events just, because sometimes you just need to talk to somebody, <laughs> another perspective. You Bounce know? something off yeah, of them. Even yeah. Even though you may know the answer or you say, hey, what do you think about this setup? And, yeah. You know, you can go yep. back and forth. Yeah. And yep. I know that cost, so I, I, I get it, but. Uh, sometimes it's, it's worth it. Yeah. So, no, I'm, 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 I'm I, no, I hear you, man. That, that is awesome. How long, like for couples out there, I want you to tell them how long it truly takes to do wedding portraits for the family, oh, for the bridal boy. party Ooh. and for the couple. How long does it truly take? Like the true, true number, <laughs> like let's just say a wedding of uh, say they got six on each side, so a twelve-person wedding yeah. party mm -hmm. and fourteen, including the bride and the groom. Yeah, how long? And would let's it, say kids. Let's say we got the kids. Yeah, and so Maybe. let's just say, how long does it truly take to do to get great portraits, to get the family photo? They got decent sized family to get the yeah. family photos and the bridal portrait. I mean, and the bridal right. party as well. How long does it? Yeah, you know, man. I mean, we, the stories I know. I'll get ripped for this answer, but some of them, <laughs> they can take, it can take as long as 90 minutes, believe yes. it or not. I know it can, but yeah. should it, will it, will a planner ever allocate that? There's no way they will. No, they won't. They would never give us 90 <laughs> minutes. It could take. Tiffany right? and all of our planners, yeah. both Tiffany's is probably yeah, yeah. like, y'all are crazy. No, no, no. <laughs> 90 minutes would never happen. Yeah. But no, I would say if I can get 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah. 30 is the minimum. Yeah, I would 30 agree. 30 is the minimum. Got to be the minimum. I would minimum. love to have an hour, but yes. I know an hour with things running behind. Yeah. It's it's hard. Right. 90 minutes would be optimal, but even though I've had 90 minutes, but half of my time has been chasing people around mm -hmm. on a destination wedding. Where's said groomsman? Oh, he went to the bar. Oh, where's the little kid? Oh, he had to go to the bathroom. Oh, he stained his shirt. You know, half of the time is some stuff that is not... <laughs> about our control uh -huh. think about it right yeah somebody went to bed we can't find it we had that with my own wedding mm -hmm. we're looking for one of my wife's brothers oh he went up to cocktail he didn't know right. he was supposed to come down yep, yep. we had to go get somebody to wrangle him to get him up. yeah so 
that took at least another 45, 30, 45 minutes. So in fact, hour on an optimal 90 minutes, if I was great, I, if I had 90 minutes, every photographer would agree with me. If we had 90 minutes for all the family portraits, that's more than enough time. We could take our time, mm-hmm. best case scenario, and we can have amazing bridal party portraits. Yeah. And we can take our time with the family. But we're so used to rushing. Yep. That we've done them in 15 minutes. Okay, who's next? Boom, yep. boom, 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 yep. boom, boom, boom. And you learn to live. You learn to live with that. You, you learn to, to live with it. I was yeah. one of the couples that um, we did. Um, she, they left the venue and went to go take portraits, but they didn't have me in the car. Me or the other photographer inside the van. So we wound up you going back out. Them? And that was, that was, no, they had to come back. And it was downtown Harrisburg. They had to come back and get us, and then we had to go back over, but we were rushed. How we didn't long have enough. did that take? It, we only had like maybe 10 or 15 minutes once we got back there because they were starting to do food drops. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was, it yeah. was, uh, they thought we was in the in the party bus, bus. though. And we wasn't. Mm-hmm. And you know, because we grabbing gear and putting our stuff in so that way we can, and it did not it happen. It, it it so, and I say that because it's truly a blessing when you have. 45 minutes or longer, 45 minutes, an hour, somewhere around there. But a lot of times we don't get that. So we feel rushed and we're rushing all the time. So sometimes the couple don't get all the shots that they really, really want. Yeah. So so I'm saying that to say to all the couples out there, try to plan at least 30 to 45 minutes yeah. for your bridal portraits. That's for everything. That would give your photographer a lot of time to do to. what they need to do. And mishaps because mishaps happen right yeah um there's a time that we were supposed to go one place and then they switched the place where to go and i couldn't find in a car like you i couldn't find the bride and groom yeah you know what i mean i had to call them they didn't have their cell phone on them on they, that day. they don't not on the, the planner day wasn't with them yep. so it just there's communication murphy's law happens and that extra time and uh you you depend on so many people but yeah if if I can have a good 60 minutes for everything, not just bridal and groom, bride and groom, but everybody, because mm-hmm. that encompasses after the ceremony, you want to give them downtime. Yep. Cause after ceremony, it just don't, people have to exit and depending on where it yeah. is, there's so many factors yep. and so many weddings are so different. Yes. That's absolutely. the thing about doing wedding photography, every wedding and every situation is different. It's not yep. like going to a nine to five where it's predictable. Yeah. You go into somewhere like, you know, it's like playing, if you play football, basketball, it's like playing an away game every game. Yes, that's true. <laughs> you're never home. Yep. And even if you're home, it's a different situation because you may be in a home video, you know how to shoot, but it's different characters, yeah. different people, yep. different planners. I mean, it's very few, rarely, that you can have all the same vendors on every wedding. Right. Yeah, if you have a few of them, you can be good, but it's, it's still different people. Yeah. Different, you know? For sure. Yeah, it's a one-time event. So, yeah. Yeah. How, how, how do you work with other vendors? Like like when you are working with the videographer, the yeah. DJ and all that stuff, how do you yeah. how do you go about, as the photographer, how do you go about planning that with them? Yeah, and all I like that kind working. Of stuff? Good question. I like working with, a lot of times I do wedding photo and video packages, so I work with a few videographers that I know, mm-hmm. and we hire them under our brand. Yep. And um, if we don't, we know them and we refer them. Because I think it's synergy, like I talk about yeah. a lot. And the DJ and uh, um, the planner, um, if we all work together before, or even if we haven't, mm-hmm. we trust hopefully each other's professional judgment. And we're not new to this. Right. You know, we're not new to this. We know it. And we respect everybody. Um, but I think that um, vendors, especially photographers, videographers, makeup artists, hairstylists, we all have to work on the same goal. Mm-hmm. And um, there's been times that I remember when a hairstylist forgot some of the hair and then, and it was late and that throws everything off yes. or um, somebody left a light somewhere has to go. So yeah. <laughs> what happened, what happened, right? All these horror stories, but at the end of the day, we all work for the bride and groom, yeah. but we don't need to jostle or like, Oh, you're in my shot. You're this, you're that. I'm like, dude, we're all working together. Yeah. And I've seen that happen. And I see that work in a good, in a great way, right? In a great way. So I love working with, the great vendors and I can work for almost anybody as long as everybody's just respectful of yeah, everybody. Yeah, for sure. And um, Absolutely. We're in the same. What are some of the trends you're seeing in the industry? 
Wow. One of the trends I think we're seeing is more, well, we saw the editorial. Uh, we're seeing a lot of, with Instagram, we're seeing a lot of short form video. Yeah. Photographers are now, when I started in video, as you know. Yes, you uh, did. <laughs> photographers are now doing a lot of video. Look at what we're doing now. Yeah. Um, but years ago, 10 years ago, a photographer would never uh, hold up their phone and do a reel, or it wasn't called reels back then, or short form video right. or a trailer. But nowadays, a uh, trend's, that people, uh, you say content creators, uh, people are coming with cell phones. So every, we're in this thing called the fierce urgency of now. I love it and I hate it at the same time, <laughs> right? I love it because I'm part of it, but mm -hmm. I hate it because it's a pressure. Yeah. You shoot something for somebody, then in 10 hours, well, where are 100, the AI generation, where are <laughs> my, you know, 800 edited pictures? I know uh -huh. you just ran through AI. I know right. you just ran them through whatever, you know what I mean? And even without the wedding clients, your headshot clients can be the same way. Yeah. You take it on Saturday, by Saturday at uh, midnight, they're asking, where are my headshot proofs? Yep, yep, yep. Because that's what we're used to, man. And right those now. Are trends. Yeah, right now. It was like the sneak peek, because the sneak peek was usually maybe, when we first started, right, what, yeah. two, three days, yeah. maybe? Now, sneak peek is like, I'm on my phone downloading images from my A7, A7R5 to my mm. cell phone right now, and I could be editing. Wow. Because people want They them. want them right then and there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even the magazines, if you're shooting celebrity weddings, I know friends of mine, I don't really shoot celebrity weddings, but like they want the exclusives immediately. Yeah. The celebrity, like my friends who shoot like People Magazine and other uh, high publications, they want those. You know, so that uh, it's the pressure to perform. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure. Um, I don't like that particularly. Yeah. But that's where we are. So you either... You live by the sword and you die by the sword. So yeah. it's one of those kind of things. But the only other trend is I do see, I see more people enjoying their day. And I'm seeing older couples, um, even when I'm speaking for my own self, when I say enjoying their day, not thinking that it's a thing to, to be editorial, to be this, to just enjoying the day, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's the thing that, that I'm hoping couples get, used to instead of trying to worrying about looking this way and yeah we have to look great or worry about social media yeah yeah man. and i think i'm hoping that trend i don't know if it will go away with the generation with the tiktok generation but right. but but i'm hoping that more and more people will look at the day and say you know what instead of worrying about these short videos that were great what memories and what uh -huh. timeless portraits and what timeless things that we have for our wall. And um, I love videos. I, I love them. But I think that nothing is going to ever, ever, ever replace some moments that I see when I saw my wife walk down that aisle and I see her looking at me. Yeah. And and I see that image and that just brings me right back to it. Right. It brings me right back to it. So right. I, I'm thinking those genuine moments. I think hopefully they're coming back. Hopefully. Yeah, but hopefully. We got to bring them back. Hopefully, yeah, we got we to bring before, them back. I got too much gray when we retire, man. When we get out of this business. Yeah, I'm getting man. some myself. <laughs> you got to bring the gray. But we've been in the business for a while. But, yeah. But it's been a blessing to us. And uh, we know met a lot of good people. We met the Mulaluchi years ago. Yeah, yeah. And Baltimore. And, yep, yep. Um, yeah, man. Just to see people still doing it is a blessing. Yes. At Absolutely. a certain level. Yep. See you and Kenny, and yeah. Michael Clark. Yeah. I could go on and Oh, on yeah, on. for sure, man. I mean, people have been doing it a lot. Of and yep. I know there are new cats that come in every day. Yeah. And they're they're great. The young guys are, whew. They're getting it just what? like that. Yeah. But you think when we started, think about our cameras, how long it took us. Yeah, man. How long did it take yeah. us? Yeah, it was a while. It took a couple years. <laughs> it wasn't easy. We didn't have mirrorless, did we? No. We, we didn't have <laughs> that all thing was just stuff. flipping. Yeah, DSLR <laughs> yeah. stuff and, and, the, and the big SD cards. We had those yeah. big CF cards. CF cards. Those yep. CF cards. Five D Mark Threes and Mark Twos. Yeah, and one no mirrorless. It wasn't like yeah. immediate stuff. Yeah, no. Well, we, I don't go back to film like some of my mentors, but yeah. they go back further. Oh yeah. We had to develop film. We had to wait four days. At, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a I got a film camera at home. I get out and dabble with it every yeah. once in a while. Yeah, yeah. But um, how 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 has has uh, Instagram changed the industry? Yeah. I always ask vendors this question, mm -hmm. and I kind of try to save this for last. Yeah, a lot of times because Instagram is a everything is is is, is vertical, mm -hmm. you know. And as mm -hmm. photographers, we used to shooting landscape, landscape, you yeah. know. 
So how to how has Instagram change the way we do things. And I know you got a big following on Instagram yeah, and, you know, moderate. people love your work <laughs> and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. But yeah. how, how has Instagram changed the, the well, game? I, I've changed the way. Well, I'll give you two answers. I changed the way, first of all, how I use Instagram. I think we all have, right? When it first came out, um, we lived and we, we, well, we didn't live and die by it, but we lived by it a lot for referrals mm-hmm. and we do things. Um, and, I got a pretty good following for Instagram, believe it or not, through wedding and those lit videos or chip lit videos. I got a pretty healthy, and even on TikTok, I'm not big on TikTok, but every time I post something with a wedding, dancing or something, it gets way more views than me sitting down talking to you mm-hmm. or doing something else because people like to be entertained. Yeah. I think it's that entertainment value. And now Instagram has changed in a fact. It's more of the shock value yeah. where it's, oh my God. And and it's, um, you've seen this on Instagram where people will talk about um, how much I pay for my wedding. So I pay my venue, my floor is $35,000. I pay my venue this. And they put the numbers up there. You see yeah. these things, yes. right? Yes. So that's a shock value. And then people go in the comments and do what? I would have never paid $35,000 for that <laughs> floor. So da, da, da. Okay. Because so, everybody has an opinion, yep. right? Everybody yep. has an opinion. So I think it's changed for the shock value. And sometimes the person who does the most shocking thing, it can be like, I was watching something the other day. I sent some friends. It was very, it wasn't something I would ever post as a photographer, but it was to the thing where people were like, it was some audio and it had some foul words in it, but uh-huh. it was just without words alone. It talking about accepting food stamps and sending WIC cards and stuff for photography. Really? It was so it was so outlandish. Yeah. It was funny, but it was sad to say, this is what gets attention now. Wow. Because we're competing for attention. Think about it. Yeah. People forge stuff that's so outlandish. Yeah, man. The stuff is more curated. When we first got on Instagram, it was a very curated, professional swipe photo feed. Now, now, it's, it's, become, now it's become, let me see what's the most thing to get the attention. Yep. And let me see sometimes it can even be fake where it can be somebody doing vows and their mother-in-law screaming, Oh no, she not marrying him. And you know what I mean? <laughs> it can be something crazy like that yeah. on a regular photographer's page and they can be asked a question and captioned, what would you do? And they can use that for views. Yeah. And then I'm not a big proponent of that, man. I just, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm just, I mean, I don't want to knock people who do it. Yeah. Say, but I'm just, I think if you have something that's on your brand, why go off script for views? Right. Because those people are not going to be with you. People want to unfollow you. Here's the thing. I don't care about, I'd rather have thousands of dollars and thousands of followers any, right. any day, man. Oh, yeah. It doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah. So I think Instagram is double-edged sword. We use it. We live by it. We die by it. But I think, again, if I'm advising the people who I educate, I'm advising them to, to build their own house, get an email list, get some type of thing that you can control mm-hmm. that you can keep that email list and move it somewhere. Yeah. I, I've got more stuff from my email list. I send out. Yeah. I get social media help. A lot. Yeah. But people sometimes just some, some things, some opportunities I just got the other day, just from my email, list, sending yeah. it out. And yep. I know people like, well, people who don't answer emails and look at it. Mm, yeah. You're right. They don't as much, but guess what? The people who want to hear from you, We'll open it. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, true. And the people at home, it's not just doing Black Friday. It's, right. it's, it's somebody's making money off it. So I, I love Instagram, but I'm using it in a way. I'm doing more personal stuff on there. Mm-hmm. I'm doing more corporate work now. Yeah. And Instagram doesn't afford me the kind of stuff that I do now. But in a wedding heyday, oh, I live by it. Yeah. I live by it. But, but again, be careful because you need to stick to your brand. I tell photographers, stick to your brand. Don't use that trending audio just because it's there. Make sure that it's on what you want to do. Right. It may be funny to you, but some people may it may it may turn off. You know, that's good advice. And yeah, it, it may turn off. And I don't have anything about people using stuff with with language and stuff. That's on you. But yeah. if that's not what you do, right? Don't change it up. Man. Yeah, I yeah I don't do none of that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not me either. But I'm just saying. I, I see it a lot. Yeah. And it gets shared a lot sometimes. Yep, yep, so yep. it just Yeah. And I mean, hey, do your thing. We're not saying do your thing. I'm not knocking you, Chip not knocking yeah. you. We just saying yeah. we don't get down like yeah, that. Yeah, we don't get down <laughs> like that. But 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 I want people to to if you're gonna do that, 
stay consistent. Right. Does, oh, yeah, yeah, you can switch up, but just stay consistent with what you are, which, yeah. what you are. If I went off posting some rants and some other stuff, yeah. you know, people are like, what? That's it's not, not, not on your brand. Yeah, it's right. not. If I saw you doing some stuff, yeah. I was like, has your account been hacked? Right. You know, there was a time where I got hacked when somebody was impersonated and I was, somebody had I duplicated my account and they were asking for some money and stuff like that. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. You know, come yeah. on. People you should know that. that's not you. Yeah. 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 But people are like, is this you? You asking for money? So, yeah. Yeah. We just want to make sure because there's so many scams out here. It is. And when you see stuff on Instagram nowadays, we used to believe everything we see on social media. Mm-hmm. Now, Take we see stuff. Yeah. We see stuff like the Cheesecake Factory dating thing where uh-huh. people are like, oh, I don't go to that Cheesecake Factory on our first date. We, that's all big viral thing. And now, <laughs> remember that thing? Remember that whole situation? I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. And that was fake. You know, I was just like, what? It's fake. I didn't even like sometimes I don't even be tuned into that stuff because yeah. I got so much other stuff that I'm doing, you know. But, but it gets your attention because yeah. people everybody's sharing it. Our stories about a date or this or how much to spend. And before you know it, you're, you know, so our kids and the younger people, younger generation are coming up and seeing this stuff and we're vying for attention. So yeah, yeah I'm just just be guarded with stuff. Just right. be guarded. Right, right. Cool. Well, it's good advice, man. But yeah, man. again, thanks for coming on, hey, man. I tell, tell all the people where they can yeah. find you at, man. Well, tell yeah. them all, Chip Lit, <laughs> you know, the educator, the photographer. Yeah. Tell them where they can find my brother yeah, at. Man. I want Instagram at Chip Dizard, D I Z A R D, and just my website. I have a wedding website and a regular website. Just my, search my name. Okay. You can find me on all these Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, unfortunately, or fortunately, and all these <laughs> other places. So, I love doing what I do. I love educating the next generation. And yep. if you're looking, if people are looking to to find something for sustainable business, yep. because I think it's easy to become viral because there'll always be somebody next, right? There was Jordan. Now there's LeBron. Mm-hmm. Then there'll be somebody else after LeBron. There'll, yep. There's always somebody next. So right. what can you do to have a career that can be sustainable, that can weather the storm, the trends, mm-hmm. and get business? Right. And um, currently I'm pivoting um, out of weddings. I'm not doing as many weddings as I used to. And it's tough, but it's a good thing. I'm doing more corporate events, but I'm showing people though, I still keep my foot in the wedding pool, but Mm -hmm. I'm not like, you know, 10 toes down in there. Right, right, right. I got you. I have maybe like a pinky toe in there. (laughs) I have two or three this year, but uh, but I am fortunate to help and mentor up and coming photographers and seasoned photographers. It's not really young people. It's some older people who have a camera and want to get into yeah. it and side hustle. Yep, yep. And they want to know. Yeah. So it's not just, I'm not just talking about people in, in college and under, under 30. I'm talking about people 40 and over. Yeah. And just, and just thinking. So I, I'm here to help. I'm open book. If you send me a message, tell me you saw me on the podcast. Uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'll even give you a free consultation. There you go. <laughs> you heard Look it at here. that. Free consultation. <laughs> yeah, wedding dreams it. unveiled. <laughs> Chip Lit, yeah, Chip Desard, Chip Desard dot com, right? Yes, sir. That's he'll hook it. you up. Just, just tell him you saw him on Wedding Dreams Unveiled, and and, and he'll it, hook you up. Yes, I'll get you that consultation. We'll talk with Zoom, yep. and we'll go from there. I appreciate you. Though. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, there you have it. Thank you, everybody, for listening. This will be on YouTube as a video. It'll also be on Spotify. Also, it'll be on Apple Podcasts, on Google, everywhere where you can find your podcast at. Um, if you got any questions or comments for the show, leave them in the uh, in the comments. We appreciate you standing around. And, you know, if if you want to come on or, you know, any wedding couples, anybody that just got married within the last 18 months to two years, tell them to email the show podcast at wedding dreams dot com. So that way we can get them on. We can talk to them first, make sure they're a good fit for the show. And then we'll try to get them on all the vendors out there. If you guys want to come on, got a good story to tell, please email me, DM me. It's I can be reached. But until next time, we'll see you guys around. Thank you for listening. Peace.